Good morning. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless this word, bless my tongue, and bless those out there that listen to this, that they receive your word, they learn to love you, and they realize the truth. In Jesus' name I pray. And let me lead not one person astray. In Jesus' name, amen. So with Thanksgiving being tomorrow, I figured I'd talk about you know being thankful for everything. And we have to. I mean, if you're going through something, more than likely you're going through something for a purpose, okay? That purpose could be, you know, you getting some punishment because, you know, your behavior hasn't been how God wants it to be, especially if you're claiming to be Christian and you're not acting like it. There will be punishment that comes with that. You'd rather have your punishment on earth than in, than after that, <laughs> honestly. Um, but if you're not thankful for everything that God does for you, then you're missing out on a whole lot you could get, be experiencing. You know, a joy. You know, a lot of people put stock in their joy, you know, being in what they have, who they are, you know, what job they have, how many you know, what kind of car they have, how big is their house, how fancy is their house, how many things do they have, a lot of people put joy into that, and if that's where your joy comes from, I feel sorry for you, I really do, your joy should be coming from God, from the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross to save your sin, to save you from your sins, so, you know, even if you ain't got a car, you ain't got a job, be thankful for it, it is, I mean, be thankful for it. Just say, okay, so I'm, I'm not working. I don't have a job. I don't have anything. What can I do to better myself? Ah, get in your Bible. Read it. <laughs> I'll preach this till the, till the day I die. Get in your Bible and read it for yourself. Don't trust no man in anything. Because let's be honest, I have come to find that even some of my brothers and sisters in Christ aren't trustworthy. And it sucks to say that. It really does. But, you know, when you allow the world into the church, that's the kind of things you can expect. But be thankful. Okay, I don't have a job. So what do I do? <gasps> oh, here's an idea. Read the Bible. Get on a deeper level with God so that you can understand fully what he expects of us. You know, I'm not telling everybody to get out there, read your Bible and become a preacher because you really don't want that. I mean, those of us who teach are held to a higher standard because we're responsible because if we lead anybody astray, their blood's going to be on my hands or our hands. And I quite honestly, I've done enough in my lifetime not to want anybody else's blood on my hands. Okay. So that's why I always pray, you know, Lord, don't let me lead anybody astray. I would rather die than lead anybody astray. That's an actual fact. I have prayed that prayer many times. But it's not just the words that we speak, it's our actions, it's the things that we do that can help lead others astray. Now, when you take your flesh and add it to the equation, you're going to fail and fail miserably. But when you take your flesh and you, you, you know, put it to the side and say, Lord, let's get spiritual with this, then you'll grow. You'll absolutely 100% grow as long as you're seeking a spiritual understanding. If you're seeking a fleshly understanding, you're, you're going to be stagnant. You're not going to grow. You're going to fall victim to the same old stuff. You're going to fall victim to, you know, the tricks of the devil because you're not going to be prepared. You know, you have to put on the whole armor of God. It's Ephesians chapter 6. Get in there and read it. You know, you have to. Yeah. You can't lie, you can't steal, you can't cheat, you can't, you know, go have sex with people. You know, sexually immoral liars, thieves will not make it into heaven. 
I believe that's in James chapter 4 somewhere. Get in there and read it. Because God tells you who's not going to make it into heaven. I was a liar for a long time. You know, lied about little stuff here and there just because, you know, a lot of times I didn't want to deal with, you know, the nonsense that was going to come come with it. So, you know, it is what it is. I did it. I admit it. You know, me lying is part of what caused my first wife to want to divorce me. There were other factors. Some of them don't realize that I know exactly what those factors are, but I do. And that's fine. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry. It is what it is. And over the last, you know, decade or so, I've come to realize, oh, what the Lord saved me from. <laughs> I'm not bashing anybody, but I was saved from from stuff I couldn't have dealt with. Because I wasn't ready to deal with some of the nonsense that happened. But, you know, it is what it is. I have grown to become a better man. I'm not a good man because ain't none of us good. If anybody tells you they're a good man, they're lying. I'm just saying. I will always be a sinner saved by grace. That is pretty much the only thing I got going for me is I'm a sinner saved by grace. The grace of God that he sent his only, begot only begotten son to die on the cross for my sins. That's where my joy comes from. Knowing the fact that I'm good. Now, I'm not good as in I'm not a good person. I'm I'm okay. You know, I'm I'm going to make it. Because I found my joy. I found the reason for my being, my purpose in life. It it I'm I'm I've opened up my eyes and my heart and my arms to embrace the calling. It's wild. And I have peace. No matter what's going on, I got peace. You know, my kids. And, you know, I usually don't care what another human being thinks about me. And that's an actual fact because I've never cared. But my kids. My oldest two, especially. They, um... They've seen the difference. You know, my my oldest child, she's, she's already said, Dad, I, I can tell there's something different with you this time. Oh, yeah, there's something different. I'm, I'm not interested in being anything other than the man of God that I'm supposed to be. You know, there's, there's, I don't, that's my joy. I'm thankful for God that, I'm thankful to God that he didn't kill me a long time ago. Because uh, he, you know. If I was God, I would have done it. Because I would have looked at me and I'm like, dude's lost, man. That's a lost cause. Just be done with him. But God knew enough because he knew me before he formed me in my mama's womb who I would turn out to be. And have I reached that plateau? Not even close. I'm just getting started. Do I do this because I want to be you know, seen? I want to be heard? No, because quite honestly, if I could live in the woods and hide from the world, I would. Because I don't like this world. This world sucks. <laughs> it's just that wretched, man. You know, you got the alphabet people talking about, uh, you know, a seven, eight-year-old can, can claim they're gay. Ugh. No. You know, you got people wanting to change their sexual identity. Um, or change actually their identities because, oh, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body or I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. No, you're not. No, you're not. That is a lie from the devil. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And if you, su if you succumb to that lie, you will end up in a pit of hell. Do I hate people? No. Do I love people? Yes, I love people. Do I love their sin? No. But I'm thankful that God has made me who I am. You know, I, I kept wondering why God would choose me. Why God? Why me? I mean, why me? Why me? Why me? You know, when you when God calls you and you you don't weren't raised in church and you don't know 
wholeheartedly, you know, comprehend the word of God, it can be a little difficult to deal with at times because, you know, God, why, why, why me? I mean, what is so special about me? And I honestly believe that I'm not easily influenced. I'm not. You know, I march to the beat of my own drum. And I'm thankful for that. So why am I talking this morning about being thankful? And Because. What's the alternative? I mean, you can run around and be miserable and mope and complain. And woe is me. But what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? You know, and I'm not talking about, you know, getting out there and, and you know, you handling what you need, what you think needs to be done yourself, because that's not the case. You know, a lot of times people say, you know, that, you know, if you don't do this, you don't do that. Well, there's some biblical truth to a man working. But there's also that need to fulfill God's call on your life. And that should be your sole purpose in life. Not not trying to earn a dollar bill. No. 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 That's not my purpose. If I cared about money, if money drove me, I could have done a whole lot more with my life if money drove me. But, but, but money's never driven me. Money's never been in been the reason why I I exist. I don't care about money like that. You know, I, I've been a maintenance worker. I've been a maintenance supervisor. I've been HVAC service tech. You know, I've done various construction jobs. I got talked into them. Am I thankful for the knowledge that I have? Absolutely, because now I can fix anything in my house. I don't have to call nobody. You know, I don't have to worry about somebody else saying, you know, that's going to be, you know, Fifteen hundred dollars to replace that? No, because I can go buy the part for about five hundred and get it done myself. So that's what I'll do. But I'm still thankful. I'm thankful that my dad and my grandpa taught me how to fix some things. You know, dad more than grandpa, because you know, summers with grandparents. You know, I, I, I. I just wanted to hang with Grandpa. I didn't care what we were doing. I just wanted to hang with Grandpa. But I'm thankful for everything I've ever been through. I'm thankful for, you know, getting arrested. I'm thankful for going to jail. I'm thankful for not being killed. You know, not being a murder victim, which is was a high possibility back in the day. You know, there was a gentleman at one point in time wanted to kill me. That gentleman is now dead. I didn't do it. But, you know, when you look back at things, you, you, you be thankful for every little thing, every hardship, every joy, every, you know, disappointment, every, you know, everything. You have to be thankful in everything. Otherwise, you're missing, you're going to miss out on so much. I'm thankful that I got, you know, I was married and I'm divorced. Kind of weird that I said that, but I'm thankful for that. You know, because now, should I get married again, I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to compromise God's word at any point for anybody for any reason. Because if that's what I'm going to do, you might as well just kill me now. I have no desire to compromise the word of God because compromise is of the devil. I'm dead serious about this. If you're going to compromise the word of God, then you might as well just go hang with the devil because that's all you, that's all it's worth. That is the devil's, that is the devil's way of doing things. Compromise the word of God. See, if you, if you compromise, you can have this, you could have this, you could have this. No, I don't want none of that. I'm not going to compromise the word of God. Not anymore. I'm done. I've enjoyed so much peace, which is really Odd. If you knew the extent of my circumstances to know that I have peace, hmm. 
okay, I have peace. I'm good. I'm good with that. But I am thankful. I'm thankful every day. I'm thankful for my kids, all three of them. I'm thankful for a wife I don't have yet. I'm thankful for a job I don't have yet. Actually, I'm, I'm in a job, but, you know, I'm thankful for for blessings that are coming. I haven't, haven't seen them yet, but they're coming. I know they're coming. All I have to do is stand strong, be firm in my faith, and continue to do what I'm doing because I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my son. I'm thankful that, yes, my son is, he can be, um, he has violent tendencies like his old man does, but I'm thankful that God's working on him to get rid of those tendencies, to be more, because my son has a soft heart. You wouldn't be able to tell it by look, you know, by hanging out with him or, you know, well, by just meeting him and seeing how he looks. Because he's not a big smiler. He gets that from his old man. I'm not big on smiling, but I've got a lot of joy now. So I, I tend to, you know, show my face, my joy a little bit more. Um, but I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful that he's he's learning and growing. And I'm thankful for my, my daughters. You know, my oldest daughter, she's a work in progress. You know, I was a work in progress. I hope she doesn't take as long as I did, but I'm thankful for her. I'm thankful that she she knows. She knows she's got a call on her life, you know. But I'm thankful because she's firm in who she in what she believes, and you know. Can she be easily swayed on some things? Yes, but when it comes to matters of, of God and what the Bible says, no, because she was raised in church, thank God. You know, her mom and I dedicated her and her brother to God when they were born. I mean, listen, my children are God's gift. I got to give them back to him. I ha we had to give my, our kids back to him because without him, without him, our kids were, would be destined for hell. You know, I was watching a pastor the other day and he was talking about hell and, you know, a lot of people are going to be surprised when they get to judgment day. But I was a good person. No, you're not. You know, listen, if you can justify the little bitty, what you call inconsequential sin that you, you know, perpetrate through your life as, oh, it's not that big a deal. To you, it's not that big a deal. Okay, so it's it's not that big a deal that you stole salt packets from, from a restaurant or you, you took, you know, an ashtray from a hotel or... After you've already, you know, filled your full of food, you go back and you get stuff to take home when that's not the policy. You're not supposed to take stuff home from a buffet. Seen it done. That's still sin because you're stealing. That's still a sin. You know, or when your wife goes, honey, do I look fat in this dress? And if she looks fat, you go, oh, no, honey, you look beautiful. Come on, man. Don't lie, because that's still a lie. It may be a little white lie to save her feelings, but it's still a lie. And the Bible says all liars. It didn't say, you know, those who just tell big lies. It says all liars ain't going to heaven. That's a hard one to get by because you want to, you know, as, as human beings, we want to take it easy. We want to, we don't want to be mean to people. So we try to spare their feelings. Well, guess what? You can do it in a way where it shows some tact and you're not rude about it, but don't lie about it. Not even a little bit. Don't lie. You know, if your wife's looking a little chunky in a dress and she asks you that question, as well, so, honey, how about, you know, it's not complimentary to you. That I can say that much. Like, what do you mean? You know, or how about before your wife gets to that point? You take the initiative 
to start working out. Because then she's going to be like, huh. Be like, hey, babe, I'm, I'm going to go work out. You want to come? Just bring her with you. Go work out together. I mean, that. listen, that is some serious growth when you and your wife can work out together. Now, I'm not talking about be ultra competitive and, you know, got to outdo everybody. No, nah, just work out. You know, go walk and, you know, I, I don't run for fun. That, to me, is just retarded. <laughs> But I can run with a purpose. And running with a purpose usually entails basketball or softball. I, I, I love to do those kind of things. But I say these things so that you learn to be grateful and thankful for everything and, and to not to not succumb to the devil, okay? Because the devil's going to tell you you're worthless. The devil's going to, you know, put all these lies on you. The devil's going to have you thinking, oh, well, if you're not, unless you're financially blessed, you know, you're not really a good Christian. Horse crap. I'm going to be honest with you. That's horse pucky. Because your financial prosperity, I promise you, you can be as financially prosperous all day long, but you can also be as spiritually wretched As the day is long. I'm dead serious about this. So be thankful. Put your faith in God. Focus on him. And see where that leads you. Life's not supposed to be easy. Never was intended to be easy. Especially for a Christian in this day and age. You know, I thought to myself the other day. I really must be out of my mind wanting to do this in this day and age. When Christians are starting to be heckled and persecuted. Persecuted. Quite a bit. And, you know, I see all these liberal suckers that want to, you know, persecute me because of my beliefs, because I'm not, I'm not going to condone the alphabet people. Not even a little bit. And I'm not even going to go through that L, whatever that nonsense is, because I just call them the alphabet people. Am I disrespecting your lifestyle? Yep. Am I ashamed of it? Nope. Because you're lifestyle if you're living that lifestyle is an abomination to god period that right there should say everything you need to know so you know i'm just talking this day because tomorrow's thanksgiving and i have a lot to be thankful for which is i'm still breathing that right there should and all and be all in the discussion is right there. I'm thankful to be breathing today because God could have, you know, God could have killed me yesterday. God could have let me die in my sleep, but he didn't. I get to help fulfill my purpose today. Whatever that purpose is, I, I want to fulfill my purpose today. I want to glorify God today because I'm thankful that I'm not dead. I'm thankful that I have another opportunity to, and get to lead somebody to Christ. You know, just by just by them seeing what I've gone through and what I'm going through and how I'm reacting and how I'm doing, you know, if that in itself can lead somebody to Christ, then I am 100% for that. By all means, God, use me. Use me to show people faith. I'm okay with that. I, I, listen, I'm a big boy. I can handle just about anything. And God has shown me what I can and cannot handle. Because I can't handle this situation. That's why it's in God's hands. Because I can't do it. I can't deal with it. I, it's it's out of my control. Yeah, out of my control. But I'm thankful that God decided, hey, he might have been a gangbanger back in the day. He might have been a a womanizer back in the day. He might have been a liar back in the day. He was a thief back in the day. He was violent back in the day. But you know what? I got a purpose for that man. And I pray that God uses me as he sees fit. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful he's made me who I am, that I am a strong opponent of the devil's. 
and his agenda and his minions that he has out in this world doing the ungodly that they're doing. I'm thankful that God gave me a strength that I didn't even realize I had. Because no matter what I've always gone through, it's always been the same. I believe the Bible for what it says. You know, if God says all liars, sexually immoral, uh, thieves, and idolaters going to go to hell, I've taken him for his word. Okay, so I don't need to be sexually immoral. I don't need to lie. I don't need to steal. I don't need to have false idols. Which, that's not something I've ever been into anyway. Then I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he's showing me that. And I'm thankful that I get, I have another shot. You know? I got another shot today to fulfill his purpose for my life. I'm thankful. Heavenly Father, I hope the rambling that I kind of did this morning reaches whoever it needs to reach. And they see and they know. Lord, I just, I thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you will do. And I thank you for the things that you did not do in my behalf and that you will not do on my behalf. I'm thankful. I love you. Love you with all my heart, Jesus. And I pray that I don't lead anybody astray. In Jesus' heavenly and holy name, I pray. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Get some turkey. I'm smoking something on the smoker. For Thanksgiving, uh, beep something, I think. But y'all be blessed. And remember, canned cranberry sauce is gross. (laughs) Bye.